Evolving Your Concept of Self. This is a Neville Goddard-based discussion, and we're going to look at three perspectives. Number one, two important questions that we want to ask ourselves, ideally on a daily basis. Number two, consciousness or conscious, specifically to subconscious, competence, which represents our consciousness. And number three, experiential-based assumptions, realizing that our assumptions are creating our reality. And we also have the ability to reflect on the experiences we have every day to realize our assumptions and our beliefs that create reality. Here are the two important questions. Number one, who are you? And number two, where are you going? Neville says, it is impossible to do anything you must be in order to do. Very important. You must be in order to do. Now, this is referring from the concept of reality being a reflection of our consciousness. In the world of Caesar, this is not assumed to be true. In the world of Caesar, we do and we apply force and we try hard to create. And although that can work and even result in internal change, there is another way of going about doing things. And that is the being within externalized in the ideal circumstances and experiences to create what we desire. Being within. He says, everything depends upon its attitude towards itself. That which it will not affirm as true of itself cannot awaken in its world. That is, your concept of yourself, such as I am strong, I am secure, I am loved, determines the world in which you live. In other words, when you say, I am a man, I am a father, I am an American, you are not defining different I am's, you are defining different concepts or arrangements of the one cause substance, the one I am. Whatever we identify I am to, consciously or subconsciously, we are. And what is generated from the assumption of what we are is the thoughts, the emotions, the behaviors, and the outer world, circumstance, people, and information changing to reflect accordingly. The cause is within consciousness, and it is based on the conscious or subconscious association with whatever we say I am too. Consciousness is one, manifesting in legions of forms or levels of consciousness. I may conceive to be a rich man, a poor man, a beggar man, or a thief, but the center of my being remains the same regardless of the concept I hold of myself. In other words, the absolute is I am. You are in existence. You are the I am, and you can choose whatever you want to identify with as far as whatever comes after I am. At the center of manifestation, there is only one I am, manifesting in legions of forms or concepts of itself, and I am that I am. That's who you really are. You are the I am prior to what you identify with. That is truly who you are. Now, from this, we have to ask ourselves, based on this experiential-based reality, where are we going with this? In other words, what do we want to create? What do we want to experience? He says, if you had a different concept of yourself, everything would be different. You are what you are, so everything is as it is. The events which you observe are determined by the concept you have of yourself. If you change your concept of yourself, the events ahead of you in time are altered, but thus altered, they form again a deterministic sequence starting from the moment of this change concept. That means at any point of your existence, you can choose a different self-image. You can choose to identify yourself with a different end result. 
with a different outcome. When we say we want to create something, we have to remember that we become the thing in our consciousness and then move down the pathway to create it. This is the way we're talking about. As mentioned, there's another way of doing it, saying that I'm going to become, I'm going to try to become, or I'm going to force myself to become, or identify with overly active conscious will rather than aligning with divine will. Divine will is when the I am and whatever you choose to identify I am with is affirmed and created via the subconscious mind. This results with what we call flow-based or automatic, autotelic thoughts, emotions, behaviors, and outer world circumstance that appear to change on their own to reflect accordingly, again holding true to the statement that reality is consciousness externalized. Now both of these are choices. We can either work with the power of I am in absolute or we can work with the power of Caesar trying to change the outer world. Or we can work with a combination of the both. However, the realization is that we are all moving towards the ultimate realization of the I am. So no matter where we are on the journey, we realize that upon cause and effect reflection, more and more so each day, a deeper level of understanding that consciousness is the creator of our reality, both the conscious and the subconscious. So we align them. We understand them. We harmonize them and we work with what we desire to create to not only bring it forth in existence, but we call this developing the skill, which is really just a level of understanding that you can and you are able to bring forth what you desire to create because it is in your consciousness first that the change occurs by first believing that this is the way that it works and testing it, putting it to use. If you've been on this journey long enough, creating what you desire from whatever way, force or working with the I am, you realize that there's many ways of bringing forth what you desire. And what you're really looking for is the one that is most in harmony with who you really are, which is the I am. What is really in harmony with the I am is creating from a perspective of flow rather than a place of force. If you look at it from two perspectives, force is actually a form of denial. It is a form of disbelief in a way, one where you experience reality as being resistance. From a place of flow, if you experience challenges on the journey, you are able to evolve your beliefs and assumptions on the challenges that show up and experience more higher degree of affirmation, understanding that it is contributing to what you desire to create. He says, by assuming the idea already to be fact, it is converted into reality. Beyond that, free will ends and everything happens in harmony with the concept assumed. So one must really then assume the concept first to realize the idea of how free will ends. You have the freedom to choose the desired state. And as a result of choosing the desired state, we allow reality to express. Express through us, which we call creative expression, and reflect to us in outer world change. It appears that we have free will along the journey, and it only appears that way through the force. As you continue on this journey of creating what you desire, you release more and more from a place of force to rise up to more of a place of flow, and then eventually rise up to a higher degree of joy, bliss, and ease in creation. Now, during the journey, what we're really looking to do is go from conscious to subconscious competence. Conscious to subconscious competence. It is then a identification that you have with your subconscious. I am more subconscious and I allow infinite intelligence to express through my subconscious would be a statement of an individual who is more in alignment with subconscious competence. Conscious competence would be trying to do pretending to be, forcing yourself. And while this occurs on the journey, remember we're on the ultimate journey of realizing who we really are, 
which is based on the two important questions, which is the I am prior to the label or the state of consciousness that we choose after the I am. The question is often asked, what should be done between the assumption of the wish fulfilled and its realization? Nothing. It is a delusion that, other than assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled, you can do anything to aid the realization of your desire. Now, this assumption is true when working with the idea that consciousness is the creator of reality. So this is based on working with the law. You think that you can do anything, you want to do something, but actually you can do nothing. The illusion of the free will to do is but ignorance of the law of assumption, upon which all action is based. Everything happens automatically. All that befalls you, all that is done by you, happens. Now let's look at this from a very practical, pragmatic perspective. I deal with entrepreneurs, and I choose to integrate these information, concepts, and ideas in the space of entrepreneurship. And all throughout my journey, I've created entrepreneurial success in many different ways, working with the world of Caesar and working with the world of imagination, which is what Neville refers to. And I will pick world of imagination over world of Caesar any day because of how I experience reality. What I notice is that I choose to do everything automatically I actually find myself doing things that I want to do and everything is contributing to what I desire to create. And when I share this with others and they too affirm this way of living reality, they begin to enjoy and actually choose what they actually enjoy to do and create reality from that perspective or the end result from that perspective. And because we for many years have been so identified with the idea of creating from a place of force, we then go and create reality from the place of force. And then not only do we bring forth what we desire, but we do it from a place of force. In other words, it seems stressful. The other thing that can happen along this journey is a person can choose to go down the journey to create entrepreneurial success. And as a result of identifying with the force and constantly creating from the perspective of force, they get burnt out, they get frustrated, and they choose to give up. And they release from the desire of seeing the end result. They actually then go into a different state of consciousness, which is to affirm that they don't want to see the end result and thus reflect accordingly. Now, when we realize that everything happens automatically, we realize then thoughts, emotions, behaviors, and outer world circumstance can change on its own. And also, it is a reflection of the consciousness. What has primarily been affirmed on the subconscious is then allowed to express through you. Now, the easiest way, and actually the most pragmatic way that I found to live this more so, in other words, align more so what we, with what we desire to create, is to observe the different experiences that we have in our life, which Neville refers to as the world of Caesar, reactivity, and change our conception of ourself in regards to whatever it is that we're experiencing. In other words, Let's use the entrepreneurial example. I share with the client, it's important to reach out to five, 10 prospects a day. They pick up the phone or they send the emails and all of a sudden they experience a sense of doubt and fear. And then they say, well, I had a hard time doing that. I say, well, you have identified with the hard time of doing it. And this identification may be past programming, but however, you can change this programming within you can evolve the concept of yourself and perhaps choose an affirmation to do so that is something like this. I realize more and more so each day that all people represent a mood within me. I realize that everybody who is interested in what I have to offer showed up within my awareness because they are ready to receive. Upon reflection and integration of this idea, I notice more affirmation in the outer world by their responses. They appear more receptive. They appear more interested. And this facilitates itself as increase in sales, increase in fair transaction, because reality is, they represent me, an externalization of my consciousness. Now, it's these kinds of affirmations, or more specifically, changing the concept of self, 
that evolves our reality or our experiences with reality on the bridge of incidents to be more affirmative. And as a result, we'll notice that these affirmations become who we are and all these experiences of reaching out to prospects or whatever it is you have to do in whatever area of choice that you choose to apply this information happens more from a place of joy, bliss, and ease. It doesn't seem like force. And then eventually your actions and awareness become one. It becomes autotelic. You wake up each day and you just go through whatever you feel like going through and you get to the end result. This is what Neville means. We might assume, he says, that you need to do something. He's referring to the force that you need to try. And going back all the way to the beginning, if you're working with consciousness to create your reality, it is stated, it is impossible to do anything you must be in order to do, which is, in essence, changing the concept of yourself, evolving yourself, evolving the self-image, bringing yourself into what, again, I refer to as subconscious competence. So conscious competence, here's the things I have to do. Subconscious competence, you're doing all the right things and you don't even think about it. Now this increases, and this may seem like a impossibility in the beginning or a daunting task, but this has been a journey for me and many others. So it can happen a little bit more so each day as you go back into the cause-based reality. In other words, consciousness being the creator of reality, where have, perhaps you have once fallen into the effect-based reality, thinking reality is happening to you. And through that I am of reality is happening to me, you are affirming assumptions and beliefs onto your subconscious mind and recreating. So regardless, you're still creating reality from the perspective of your consciousness. You have then an ability to choose a desired state and create accordingly. So he says, your assumptions, conscious or unconscious, direct all thought and action to their fulfillment. So this is what we're talking about autotelic. Your assumptions, conscious or unconscious, otherwise referred to as subconscious, direct all thought and action to their fulfillment. So you might as well evolve your self image based on whatever you're dealing with as far as environment, people, circumstance, more and more so each day. So you can become more autotelic, one with actions and awareness become one. To understand the law of assumption, to be convinced of its truth means getting rid of all the illusions about free will to act. Free will actually means freedom to select any idea you desire. So we select an idea, we select a desire, and always remember this, if the desire exists in the mind, then it exists in reality because all creation is complete. You select the desire, and then you maintain true to the assumption that the desire will be brought forth. If any reactivity occurs in the world of Caesar, you have the power then to apply what he calls mental diets. Be in certain environments, circumstances, and surround yourself with people and information that affirm the concept of yourself that you want to see affirm. Release for a period of time, and then it'll become automatic, out of consciousness, the information, the circumstances that disempower what you desire to create. And then what you'll notice more so is that you become more autotelic. You'll realize that all that befalls you, all that is done by you happens. Actions and awareness become one. And what you will interpret as free will is more of an authentic, automatic, creative expression, not done from a place of force. What you will also notice is you will be less reactive. You will be more affirmative. You will see, as I've always stated in my videos, how everything is actually contributing to your definite chief aim. Everything then has a new meaning because whatever you say I am to, that's your perspective. So you, no matter what shows up in reality, there's infinite ways of looking at what shows up. You can choose the perspective that is most in alignment consciously, or you can allow the conscious choice to be facilitated automatically by the subconscious. thus helping you realize then further the idea of what he refers to as free will and free will actually means freedom to select an idea you desire. And beyond that, allowing everything to express. The illusion, he says, of free will to do is but ignorance of the law of assumption upon which all action is based. I am whatever we identify with. Now, I stated most of this, what we identify with is subconscious. That's why cause and effect reflection is very important. 
to remember, going back to the source, that whatever we experience in the outer world, our reaction to it, we are saying, I am too. Whatever we experience in the outer world, we have once said, I am too. And once we accept this, we then find ourselves choosing more so and understanding how we create the I am association and begin to associate I am to what is desirable. The important thing to bear in mind is that you have infinite free will in choosing your assumptions, but no power to determine conditions and events. You can create nothing, but your assumption determines what portion of creation you will experience. So he says this in very nuanced. Let's reflect upon it really deeply. The important thing to bear in mind is that you have infinite free will in choosing your assumptions, but no power to determine conditions and events. You can create nothing, but your assumption determines what portion of creation you will experience. Again, let's really look at this. He says, but no power to determine conditions and events. However, your assumption or assumptions you have within determine what portion of creation you will experience, both at the destination, will you get to the destination, and once you affirm and remain true, you will get to the destination, and also the journey, the experiences on the destination are also based on assumption, which can be evolved through mental diets, cause and effect reflection, and evolving our beliefs and assumptions on the different experiences that we have on the journey so that we can then move into higher levels of understanding of the I am and create accordingly. So experiential based assumptions is what we're looking for. What are we saying I am to? He says the power of attention is the measure of your inner force. Concentrated observation of one thing shuts out other things that cause them to disappear. The idea which impel you to action are those which dominate the consciousness, those which possess the attention. In other words, what are we giving our attention to? So really then, a good question to ask is, how are you saying I am to? So whatever shows up, how are you affirming that? What is your perspective on what shows up? He says, the time it takes your assumption to become fact your desire to be fulfilled is directly proportionate to the naturalness of your feeling of already being what you want to be, of already having what you desire. The time it takes, again, for your assumption to become fact, your desire to be fulfilled is directly proportionate to the naturalness of your feeling of already being what you want to be, of already having what you desire. Now, there's two ways of affirmation. Number one is through experience, outer world, environment. And through the proof that we see in the outer world, we affirm our subconscious mind and create accordingly. That's why when you create success, it's easier to create success in whatever area again and again and again. The other way of doing it, which is more powerful, is via your imagination. Because you can create whatever you want in your imagination and impress that to be so in the subconscious mind and your subconscious mind will create accordingly. Both ways work. You could do both. Most people that create success find themselves easily able to create success, more so from a joy, bliss, ease, flow-based perspective rather than force-based perspective. And I'll speak from experience on this because of the reference experience. Now, reference experience can be helpful. If you don't have the reference experience, then you hold true to the imagination and the mental diets and the evolving of the programming within to create accordingly. Both works. This means to make your assumptions the highest, noblest, happiest concepts. There is no better time to start than now. The present moment is always the most opportune in which to eliminate all unlovely assumptions and to concentrate only on the good. That means, what are you saying I am to? And more specifically, how are you saying I am to it? For example, a person will see an obstacle, what appears to be an obstacle, and see it as no possibility of moving forward. They'll become very reactive to it. Another person who has perhaps been through the journey and created success sees that same obstacle as an opportunity. And not only do they see it from an opportunity perspective, but they see 50 different perspectives of how to leverage that particular obstacle to create success. You see this a lot in the entrepreneurial space. And from my own personal experience, I've 
talked to thousands of thousands of entrepreneurs, and each one of them had unique distinctions and perspectives of leveraging the different obstacles that appeared in front of them to create success. This is why I like studying the different perspectives, because it just goes to show you that even those perspectives are part of the infinite potentiality of perspectives. We don't even have to think about that. We can choose to if we'd like to. I happen to be a big fan of studying entrepreneurship, but you don't have to. One has to remain true to the assumption and then realize that whatever shows up is actually contributing in nature. And we can evolve our assumptions about whatever shows up to as what he stated here. Make your assumptions the highest, noblest, happiest concepts. And no matter where you're on the journey, you can work more with the imagination. There's one assumption that says the experience in the outer world has a greater impression on the subconscious mind. That's an assumption. And there's another assumption that states the imagination has greater impression on the subconscious mind. And that's an assumption. If I had to choose, I would pick imagination because I realize now upon working with imagination that it is far more powerful to work with imagination to impress the subconscious mind than it is to work with environment. Because in imagination, you can create the ideal scene scenario visualization and impress the exact reference you want to see in the outer world. Whatever experience in the outer world exactly can be impressed in the imagination may not be able to be articulated by the outer world to the degree that you can create in your imagination. Thus, I would pick imagination. Now, I work with both. As mentioned, my four modalities for working with the subconscious mind are subconscious mind audios, revision self-talk, which are a form of working with the imagination, and environment. Choosing, in other words, mental diet, the environments that are most in alignment and in harmony with what I desire to create, and more importantly, evolving and contributing to evolve the self-concept, the further affirmation that the I am creates accordingly, and the further affirmations of whatever it is I want to associate with the I am. He says, as well as yourself, claim for others their divine inheritance. In other words, when you see that everybody is also I am, you claim for them their divine inheritance. You don't look necessarily at the identity or what they choose to identify with after the I am and say that's who they are, but realize that they are either consciously or subconsciously choosing what they want to associate with after the I am, and then you'll see them for who they really are. See only their good and the good in them steer the highest in others to confidence and self-assertion by your sincere assumption for their good, and you will be their prophet and their healer. For an inevitable fulfillment awaits all sustained assumptions. So again, what are we doing? We are approaching this from the perspective that reality is an externalization of our consciousness. All change happens within and it happens within our self-image. When we choose to live this way, we realize no one to change but self. To the degree that we can affirm and assume and continue to maintain, as he says, the feeling of the wish fulfilled, which is the ideal, which is the self-image, it is reflected on the journey as well as at the end result. So what do we do? Whenever we have any experiences that are World of Caesar based, we go back to the realization. We remember, key word is remember, that we are the I am that is putting a meaning onto that reactivity experience. And we evolve it accordingly. He says, very important. If your assumptions are not fulfilled, it is because of some error or weakness in your consciousness. However, these errors and weaknesses can be overcome. Just like learning how to ride a bike. We may fall off and forget that we are the I am that is identifying certain aspects after it. And we can choose to reassociate whatever aspects or meaning we are identifying with after the I am and make this a habitual practice to the point where we have real-time affirmations. One of the experiences that I've had as I continue to work with this kind of information is that as I experience something that brings me into what I call reactivity or anyone would call reactivity, my version of that, I'm able to write in that moment through self-talk, change the meaning by identifying what I am affirming with as far as what is coming up after I am what I choose to identify with I am and identify with something else to change that experience around real time. 
The more you integrate this information, the better you'll get at it. So again, if your assumptions are not fulfilled, it's because of some error or weakness in your consciousness, and that's okay, because you can overcome these weaknesses. Therefore, press on to the attainment of ever higher levels by feeling that you already are the person you want to be. That's the simple solution. I choose to cause and effect reflect. You can do that as well. Or you can go back to the person, the being of who you really want to be and observe that change. One of the best ways that I do this is I'll read my definite chief aim because my definite chief aim, and I always in different stages of my life had a definite chief aim. When I first started reading Think and Grow Rich, this was when it all began in 2004. But every definite chief aim was brought forth as a result of doing this. Because at any point, what can occur on the journey is you can forget that it is the I am that's identifying with whatever shows up on the bridge of incidents, the reactivity. And by reading your definite chief aim, you remember who you really are and then continue to navigate reality from that perspective. And he says, and remember that the time it takes your assumption to become reality is proportionate to the naturalness of being it. So when we're talking about actions and awareness becoming one, being autotelic, that's being natural. In other words, you imagine what you desire, you know you're going to become that, and you let it go. And then everything unfolds. Everything is happening through you to create accordingly. Experiences in the outer world changing, as well as thoughts, emotions, behaviors, aligning more and more so each day. And then finally, he says, regardless of occasional experiences to the contrary, it is your destiny to rise to higher and higher states of consciousness. What we're communicating from, what we're experiencing here in this conversation, is a higher state of consciousness way of looking at reality. We have identified that now we are the I am, and the I am is identifying itself through the different assumptions that we put after the statement I am. I am this or I am that. And reality is being created accordingly. So regardless of occasional experiences to the contrary, it is your destiny to rise to higher and higher states of consciousness and to bring into manifestation more and more of creation's infinite wonders. Actually, you are destined to reach the point where you realize that through your own desire, you can consciously create your successive destinies. If you want a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.